Recorded live from the secret underground lair of Crimson Cowl Comics and Collectible, this is the Crimson Cowl Comic Club Podcast. The following issues may contain spoilers. Welcome to a very special Crimson Cowl Comic Club creator interview. I'm Anthony. I'm David. I'm Kirby. Welcome to this very special episode. We have somebody on our show that we've been talking about on the main Crimson Cowl Comic Club for a couple years now. We have Steve Urena. How's it going? What's up? And I'm Steve. Uh, I, I love that lovely intro you guys have. So uh, I felt left out that I, I couldn't be part of it, but I'm, I'm part of it now. So I'm Steve. And uh, thank you. Thank you for, for having me. <laughs> we don't want to make you wait too long. We had to just get you right in there. Uh, for those that don't know, creator and writer of the brand new comic, Foul Mouth, this is a story about a superhero whose weapon is her power to curse. But before we dive into that, we want to know more about Steve. Uh, so we're going to queue up a couple questions here. Basically, every time we have a guest on here, we kind of want to know what their earliest like connection and memory with comic books in general, whether uh, when you first remember reading them, picked them up, wherever you saw them. Sure. So my first memory of comics, uh, I remember I was, um, I, I mean, I was a big fan as a kid growing up of like the animated TV shows. So like Spider-Man, X-Men, the Batman Adventures. And um, I, you know, I'd, I was always familiar with that. And then I I got sick in the hospital when I was, I'd have to say maybe six or seven. And I remember I was in the hospital for a few weeks and my dad brought me a big stack of comics. And from there on, I was hooked. And the comics for me was like my escape. And the fact that there were so many different ones and so many great ones. And then as I got older, you know, I would read the Spider-Mans. I'm a big fan of Green Lantern, Green Lantern, the Kyle Rayner run, not the Hal Jordan run. Uh, and, um, you know, I, and then I, I graduated to like Wizard Magazine and then Wizard Magazine opened my eyes for so many different comics, um, like the Preachers, the Stray Bullets, um, you know, all the Garth Ennis, a lot of Garth Ennis stuff. Um, uh, and then from then on, I, I always loved comics. And then in college, I took a comics, uh, a comics, a graphic novel class. And in the graphic novel class, we read uh, Black Hole and we read Persepolis and we, re we read Mouse. And I was like, you know what? This is a high art form. And this is something that I hope to do one day. And my my origin story is that I can't draw for sh for anything. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I'm a terrible draw, I'm a terrible artist. I feel like that's a lot of writers' uh, origin stories. Um, so my mom is a fashion designer. So I was like, oh, I want to draw too. I want to draw comics. And I put pen to paper, not very good. <laughs> so after that, I was like, oh, maybe I can't, maybe I can't be in comics because I can't draw. And then years later, I was like, I always wanted to find a school where it had just writing, but I never found it. I feel like it's a harder place to find. Like there's, there's always art schools, but there's no writing school. So luckily I found comics experience. And uh, from there on, they taught me how to write comics. And, and here I am, which is crazy. This is my fifth comic, I believe right now. And um, we are, <laughs> we're, we're rolling. Well, we definitely know you're a pro at doing this because I think you answered all of my upcoming questions, which is talking <laughs> about bringing in the writing and which characters and everything like that. So, yeah. um, but one thing I wanted to bring up is that, you know, anytime that you mention about, you know, that you're not an artist, you know, you always had uh, that safety blanket of nobody ever knowing what kind of art you put out there. But not too long ago, you were part uh, partook in a drink and draw in which we saw some Pee Wee Herman art that's up there that's on right. YouTube. Uh, what what show was that again? If you're able to plug that for 
uh, that's a uh, drink and draw with LA Cunningham. Uh, she's great. She's a great artist and writer. She wrote babies with rabies. Definitely go check it out. Um, but she had me on her drink and draw and she, you know, she brings on artists and creators on her show and they can draw whatever they want. So because Paul Rubens passed away, one of my favorite, one of my biggest influences is why I'm a big goofball as I am today. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's drop Pee Wee Herman. Also because Pee Wee Herman characters are a little bit easier to draw. <laughs> so I was like, all right, that, you know, I could draw the couch. I could try to draw the clock. And um, yeah, I, I love Pee Wee Herman growing up and definitely one of my biggest influences. And it was it was very cool that I got to to draw them and they actually looked like what they were supposed to look like. Yeah, a lot of times I won't, even though I've seen some of your interviews in the past, uh, but leading into the show, I didn't want to just, you know, watch everything and learn everything. But once I saw the drink, drink and draw thing and hearing about, oh, you know, you don't draw and stuff, I'm like, oh, I have to watch this. Thing, so. <laughs> I mean, what are, what are your guys are, you know, what is, what's your drawings like? Like, I'm sure since you guys are big comic people, have you guys, I mean, your, your drawing is great. I've seen your drawing. Well, uh, what about the other two? <laughs> this is actually, this is actually a great combination because all of us are artists and we've all been, uh, yeah, look, David. Yeah, it doesn't really work as a green, green screen there. <laughs> he's so good at art. He can just make it vanish in front of your eyes. You know, he's, he's dealt with being a magician, you know, an illusionist and stuff. Uh, Here's my picture of the invisible woman. <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> so yeah so uh actually all of us me and david had just gotten back from uh, mighty con as was our first time as uh artist at that convention myself and kirby wrapped up the archie challenge and uh that's he's fantastic. been drawing there's a bunch of muppets and stuff going on there so cool. actually you're in the presence of a lot of people like who've always drawn but in this like last year or so have really just kind of like ran with it. So we're kind of in an interesting space. Well, you got you, you guys definitely have a style. And, you know, I mean, with comics, the next step, you know, for this for this Crimson Cow Club is to make a comic. I want to see it. I'll, I'll support it no matter what it is. Well, uh, David does uh, have a web comic on our website, CrimsonCull.com, that uh, him and his son have created. So, yeah, all awesome. that stuff is happening and happening in the background. So it's. Perfect. Awesome. It, it, well, except, except, except for except for your buddy with the invisible woman, right? It's not happening in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. So. <laughs> and uh, so, what we're gonna do here uh, with uh, David and Kirby in the background here, if they just want to do the raise hand icon, I'm gonna set up one more question and then I'll jump in sure. to kind of keep the flow going. But right. uh, so I did have the question of when your interest of writing came in, you talked about it with college and everything, but yeah. does that go back at all? Like, you know, like myself, whether it's like journey, uh, journal entries and things like that, or what yeah, kind of connection I, with writing have you had? Uh, the big connection with writing. Um, I feel like since I couldn't draw, I still had a very big imagination and it's like, where do I, where do I input where, you know, where do I put that then and if, if, if I can't draw, what else could I do? So writing kind of came, came natural to me. And, you know, it's always, it's always great when you have great teachers who encourage you and want you to write better. And so my, my mom was a very big component, you know, component of that. She had me read like the artist way. And then I guess I started falling in love with writing and, and started doing it more and more. And I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not terrible at this. So um, like I went to college for creative writing and communications and um, creative writing is just so much fun. Like it's just I I I learned under uh, authors who have who've written before. Uh, author Tom Bailey, uh, author Glenn Retief, uh, for those who would want to check out maybe some some different authors, and they taught me. And you know, it's it's always good when you when you're in a class and you're learning things and you're encouraged because I feel like that's the tough thing when you're trying to do something. People try to put you down, like oh that's not good yet. It's like of course it's not good yet. I'm trying. I'm brand new to it. So with with writing, they were like, you know what, I, we like what you got, but like we need you to let's try this, let's try this, and let's try this, and let's try to get you make you better. So that always stuck in my mind, and and from there on, I like I, you know, it was it's it's just been a great experience, and writing has just been very a, a fun place for me to hang out, and and it, it just there's there's low pressure, like there's no there's no like you know you have to do this. It's like no, you can do whatever you want. That's why I like being independent because. I mean, listen, Marvel or DC or whoever wants to call and, and say, hey, you know, we, we like your stuff. We'd love to give you a shot. I'll, I'll listen, you know, but I love creating stuff and I love making my own things. And I, I really like not having anybody tell me what to do. So it's it's just a very fun project. And if I do a few a year or one or two a year, whatever, that's fine. But like I I'm going to keep writing until people stop buying my stuff, I guess. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think that definitely shows in your work of just that, you know, when you're reading it, just like everything that's happening and there's so much craziness being like, all right, yeah, if this was, you know, if somebody had, you know, like a higher up looking over it being like, yeah, we have to cut this joke and that and you got to move this yeah, around. I, I, I mean, look at look at slope folks. I mean, if I if I pitch that anywhere, I don't think I don't think like Marvel or D, I don't think anybody would want that, like if, especially from especially right off the bat. Like I think now since I've had a few comics under my belt that people would probably give me more of a chance. But I think if I did it there, they'd be like, you got to get out of here. <laughs> like you, you got to, this is too crazy for us. But, um, you know, here we are. And it's such a positive thing too. The comics community has been so, so great and positive and, and everybody supports each other, which is cool. Um, at least in my dealings with, with independent comics. Um, and, you know, I know there's, there's bad apples and, and, and people who gatekeep and, and all that stuff, or people were just like very negative about comics, like, oh, comics will break your heart. It's like, no, comics makes my heart full because yeah. I'm I get to create stuff that came out of that came out of nothing, and it's and I get to work with great people and, and make a world that exists and people are excited to see. So I mean, there's nothing better than that. Yeah, anytime I hear anybody say anything about like comics suck or this sucks, and they'd be like, "There's so many comics out there. You're just you just have to find. I know. Ones, you know there's so many to choose from. So yeah. Um, so what we're gonna do now in this kind of chamber of questions, we'll deal with uh, questions for Steve specifically, and then we'll move on to Foul Mouth and then some of his past projects. Uh, David, if you want to kick it off uh, with a question here. Yeah. So um, it, most of us who are, are doing these things, uh, breaking in, or e even as we've, uh, you know, some some people have uh, gotten some things published and whatever. They're mm -hmm. still holding on to those nine to five jobs and stuff like that. So this becomes sort of that, uh, you know, the the, the, the part time kind of thing that you do when you have the time. Um, how do you handle, you know, the uh, job, personal life and then fitting in um, the writing and creating comics? Is it something that you have to kind of schedule into your day? Do you do it just when you find the free time or um, uh, what what is your method for for adding that into the rest of your life. So for my method, um, I definitely keep, you know, I'll walk around with a notepad, like on my phone, I guess, cause it's, it's easier. Um, but, and I just, I just jot down ideas. So like if I'm walking and living life and, and having fun, like I'm like, Oh, that'd be a good idea for something. So I, I do that, but I try to schedule stuff. And, and, and I think usually when you have an idea that you're excited about, you can't wait to like get it, start moving on it. So I try to create deadlines for myself. Um, that's been very helpful. Um, get other people involved. Like, you know, you have your friends here, you got a good group here. So if you're like, hey, I want to make this comic or I want to make this idea, um, give me a deadline. Say, hey, by next week, uh, I need the outline done. Hey, by next week, I, ha I need five pages done. And that way you have a support system and that way you keep on a schedule. And that way you have like, okay, they're excited to read it. I'm going to keep chipping away at this thing and, and get this done. Because that's the hardest part, I think. The hardest part about writing is sitting down and writing. Yeah, like that's, that's it. So definitely, I would say, schedule for yourself. Yeah, the actual writing is tough. But I mean, once you have ideas and you're excited about it, I feel like it kind of comes out like a faucet. Like sometimes it's a, it's a slow drip. Sometimes it's a full on like, okay, I, I'm great. But I definitely think keeping a schedule, having a support system, um, that that definitely helps, and you know, just cheer each other on. Like it's like, hey, I can finish this by by Friday. I can finish this. Like, just keep deadlines, and then once you get get those deadlines, you'll get into a routine and a rhythm. Um, that'll definitely, I think, that'll help you. Um, and also just you know, having other people read your work that like comics, which which is what you know you guys do. I think that'll definitely help the the system and, and you guys figuring out like because by the time you get to 20 pages. If you just do a schedule of like, all right, I'll do five pages this week. You'll be done within the month. I mean, obviously it's polishing and, and fixing it and making it, you know, pretty, but at least you'll have a good base and you can keep going and, and, and do that. Um, another thing that I, so my, my thing too, in terms of comics is I'll have an idea. I'll make a story sentence. Like, what is this comic about? What am I trying to say? So I'd never deviate from this is, this is what this comic is about. Um, so I'll do the story sentence. I'll do character sheets of like, who are my characters? What do they look like? What do they sound like? Where are they from? Um, you know, as many details as I can about these characters, just to kind of get in my head, like, okay, this is what I'm looking for here. So I start there and then I move on to the outline. So with the outline is 
that's where I brained up basically. So like, all right, here's my story. Here's what I would like to see in the story from beginning, middle to end, write it out, you know, just, you know, an outline, just like, Hey, I want this happens because this happens. And then this happens basically is, is, is my thing. Um, so I'll go through that. And then once the outline is done, then I'll start working on pages and panels. Right. So with pages, I'll do like, okay, I want to get 10 pages done by this. So I'll I'll start doing it. Less is more in terms of dialogue. Less is more in terms of panels. Um, that's my advice to you because I know people go crazy with the panel sometimes. I'll try to be like, I'll try to keep the five. And then for for words, I try to keep it like, okay, I'll write it down, but I'll go back to it and be like, okay, how can I make this even shorter? Like what's, how do I get to the point as quickly as possible? So I'll, I'll start there. And then sooner or later, you know, sooner rather than later, if you keep to your schedule, it'll be done. And then you, you, so once you get to the 10 pages or five pages, whatever you set out for yourself, I'll read it with somebody, you know, somebody, my, my editor is my girlfriend. <laughs> so she's, she's, she's been great because I'll, I'll give her the, I'll give her the comic. She'll look at it. She'll be like, I don't, this doesn't make sense. I don't like this. This doesn't save sense. And we'll have a debate about it. I'll be like, well, I like this because of this, or yeah, you're right. We should get rid of this, or this makes more sense this, or we'll come up some, with something together. So it, it it's definitely a team sport and it's definitely helpful to, to work with people that you care about because they care about the story too, because they want to see your, your story come to life. Um, so that's, that's definitely been my process and just chipping away. Um, I, another piece of advice that I would give is too, is just like, you know, it, it doesn't have to be not everything is perfect that's the hardest part because like you you want it to be perfect you want it to be godfather 2 you want it to be paddington bear 2 you know what i mean <laughs> but um you know sometimes you just got to get it out sometimes it's like you know what i'll let the chips fall where they may this is this is good enough for now this is good let's let's work it out um but yeah definitely read it out another another thing with dialogue i'll do the voices myself and to make sure it sounds right uh for the characters um, so if it doesn't sound right when I'm talking, but like, okay, time to change this around, move this or, you know, do what I got to do, edit, edit down. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of giving your own deadline and then having a friend kind of keep you accountable to that. Whereas if yeah. you're working for yourself, it just feels like, well, I can finish this anytime because no, you need, you need somebody managing you. You know what I mean? You can't, even when you're writing something you you could write and you may think it's the best thing in the world but if somebody reads it it's like they might see it a different way so and that will help your writing but also you don't want to get you don't want to have too many cooks in the kitchen as well like this is a good core group of four it's like okay i like we like this but if you have like you, you keep worrying about what other people think yeah then it's going to get diluted yeah my right. no that's postal worker walks by being like hey i I've, i want you to read something for me you know yeah exactly no, yeah, that, there was definitely a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff in your your explanation. A lot of things that either I do myself or I see other people doing. One thing I'm bad about is taking notes there on the spot, which yeah. I, I should really do uh, more. But uh, uh, but it is, you know, it's you know, I probably go overboard on some of my background stuff, my character sheets, and everything like that. Um, but it's but I like to have that's, that that's background. For you. you know what I mean? Like that's your that's your map. So. Yeah. If it's for you, you're writing it and you want to put those details in and it helps you, then God bless. You know what I mean? Do what you got to do. Because at the end of the day, when the characters come out on the page, you know what I mean? Like those character sheets, all that stuff is for you. And for you're just to make sure that when you're writing, you don't forget it's your, it's your, it's your map. It's like, okay, I wrote this. I, this is how I, I see it. But listen, things get cut out. Things get moved around while you're writing. You might have a better idea. But at least this is like here's the roadmap. Here is here's where I'm looking for um, to go in my story, and like I want to ca capture these beats, and you and you'll just keep adding to it every time. Or, or you get like my daughter, who's who's a writer too. Um, she'll have like so many notes. She has books. <laughs> wow. Of stuff for like what for one novel, you know, she'll have like just books of of notes and yeah. and mapping things out and everything. So yeah, it gets kind of crazy. I mean, you're, you're basically, you're playing God, you know I mean? You want to make it as, as good as you can make it. But, you know, I, like I said, like a support system is definitely very helpful and it's positive. Like it's a positive thing because they want to see your work. Like they'll, you'll keep going towards that goal. Um, and it's, it's really not that bad if you just, I mean, listen, people have their jobs, people have things they need to do, but even if you just write, even if you just jot a note down, that's writing. Even if you just, you know what I mean? You don't have to, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you got to write every day. And I'm, I'm sure, sure. You know, that works. Sometimes you need to relax. Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you need to let things kind of 
gestate and then think about it the next day or think about it like, you know, a few days from now and then something else to be like, oh, I didn't think of it like that. Good, good. Uh, let's jump over to Kirby. Yeah, I, having a a system like that, it, it's a having stuff set up, having to do it is a great thing. It's like if Anthony went to mention the Archie Art Challenge, I would have never known about it. And yeah. thankfully he did. And that forced me to do 31 days in a row of drawing. So it's like, yeah, just the, getting the more, back the more you do something, the better you'll get at it too. Cause yeah. if you think about it, like, you know, I know a lot of people, it's, it's very horrifying getting started, but think about the people who didn't get started. That's a lot bigger number than the people who did. So you're already, you're already winning. You're already yeah. going to the next thing. So the fact that you're doing the 31 days, like that, that's awesome. That's a good way to start. I mean, you, you should do challenges every month of like, all right, Archie this month, exactly. I'll do X this month, I'll do the Muppets this month. Keep that. Keep my that problem time. is I got a little behind <laughs> on everything else. So once I got done with that, I, now I'm slacking on my drawing because I'm trying to God. get caught up on the stuff I missed out on. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it definitely helped get me going again. But I ask everybody the same question. Sure. I like to know, did you ever, what's your first published item? Did you send a letter to a comic or to an editor to an editorial did you obviously not a drawing or you possibly did do a drawing well i would i, I, I don't I, think I, you're a bad drawer because you <laughs> you whipped out the peewee herman bike pretty quick <laughs> i thought that was pretty good but, I, i've yeah. been told i've been told i have a style i just don't think it's good <laughs> but but um yeah with with comics i feel like i've written letters to like adventure magazine maybe or maybe drew a picture that gets in but of course i never got picked because i'm not i'm not a great artist but my first published comic, so a lot of people don't know this. So a lot of people would think it's like Slowpokes. But and Slowpokes is, is my first like indie comic creator like own thing that I did. But I actually my first comic I ever did, and if I ever make it big, like people can look for this this comic. I did a uh one of those tribute comics where it's like tribute to John Wayne, where it was like the celebrity comics or whatever. And I wrote a comic because I've I'd never done it before. Um, I was working for a place called Indie Reader as a journalist. And I was like, oh, would you be cool with me doing articles about comics? They're like, yeah, let's do independent comics. So I, I, I would reach out to people, interview people about indie comics. And I kind of, uh, I, I befriended somebody who had a comic label and they were just looking for somebody to do work. So, and I was a kid and I was dumb. So like I did it, I signed a thing, haven't made a dime off it, still waiting on the check <laughs> for that. But it's, it, it, they made it. And I never even got one, which is crazy, <laughs> but it's, it's tribute, tribute to John Wayne um you could find it online my name is on it the art is just okay but i that's my that's technically my first comic and i was very excited um but the thing is i keep seeing it in different places i've seen it at barnes and noble and like uh in libraries and like people bought it i guess but like I'm, i haven't seen a dime so i'm still waiting but hopefully hopefully that check will come in one day uh, and then the other question for this part is uh as more are coming available, are there any soon to be or already available public domain characters that you've thought about <laughs> being highly interested in jumping into? I know uh, Rob Liefeld mentions like in 2024 or 2025, the first Superman pre cape pre flight is coming available and stuff wow. like that. And Buck Rogers, he talked about and stuff. But yeah, and we just had uh, Winnie the Pooh make an appearance now and stuff. Uh, I would have to look into the public domain. I mean, I that that's the that's the tough part is like who's what's available and what is yep. it, what isn't available and what uh, versions available. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I would love to do warp versions or do, love to tell, do my own take on. I mean, Winnie the Pooh versus Slowpokes writes itself, right? Like that would be kind of that'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> But um, yeah, just I, I gotta I gotta see what's in the public domain. To uh, yeah. here, let me let me look right now, real quick. Let's see, let's see, public domain <laughs> superheroes. Let's 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 go. Yeah, that, uh, what is I it? Know, like Frankenstein's coming up here pretty oh, soon. Frank, Frankenstein would be a good one. I I definitely would love to do that. Um, let's see. Um, assuming the creature from the Black, Black Lagoon's already available, Dracula I think's still <laughs> got a ways to go. And, and it is a good point, though, when we're talking public domain characters and, and stories, um, it is the the version of it, um, because if you take a character like Superman, 
Um, there have been so many changes uh, to that character over the years. Um, and and you, you would have to be very careful to not include any of those newer elements into yeah. whatever story that you're trying to do based on that original you know you know version of it that's gone into public domain and that i think would be the tricky part where you would open yourself up to some sort of legal liability there if you you know went a little too far pushed the boundaries and uh did did the wrong thing yeah because before i listened to rob liefeld talk about what was available and stuff and he explained that superman bit i'm like i would have never known i would have just figured the character i could do whatever i want but yeah you got to watch what version you're playing with. with uh, so I see I see King Kong is available. I see King Arthur. I mean, I would do King Arthur versus King Kong. I think that'd be a cool, <laughs> cool type of thing. Um, you know, Frankenstein's mar- uh, monster. John Carter of Mars. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. basically yeah. Superman right there. <laughs> this, this says Mickey Mouse. Jay, Jay Gatsby. Ran- oh, Popeye. Well, yeah, I, that's, that's, I know that's the... Awesome. Is with Mickey Mouse, uh, I think Rob mentioned that too. The Steamboat Willie, Steamboat Willie. One coming available, that will be the first one available here pretty soon, is what he was saying. I don't know if it's available now, but but I, I, I think, uh, I think Popeye, I see Popeye is available. Hell yeah, I would definitely, yeah. I think Popeye would be perfect for me. I think, yeah, we haven't seen nothing good with Popeye in a long time. So, I'm, I'm surprised that like all those cartoons I feel like growing up are just gone. Like the Looney Tunes yeah. that are really gone, like Popeye, the Hanna Barbera stuff. So, I mean, I, 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 cave, man. <laughs> I love, I love that DC Comics used like Snagglepuss for like a gay, like theater comic. I was like, that's that's incredible. Like, that's something so different that you could do with these characters. Um, like I would do that, that, uh, I, I don't know what their names were, but they were, I think they were Hanna-Barbera cartoons and there was like three of them. And one of them had like a spring for legs. And then the the other one, they were like a band. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> all I know is that all those DC Hanna-Barbera and Looney Tunes crossovers they did, they were so good. Oh, Every single yeah, one of them. Oh, they yeah. were, they were called the, the impossibles. And there was three of them. Right. And they, they were like in a band, but one of them had like a spring for legs. <laughs> but like, I would love, I would love to just work on anything Hanna Barbera, just because of the zaniness. And I, I feel like I could tap into that. Yeah. It was I a was group just... of teenagers, and they had a talking animal or vehicle or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I remember. Oh man, and then uh, yes, I do remember that, that the car talked, right? Yeah, that, that might be. I mean, that's that's like half the Hanna-Barbera stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, everything like group, talks. Like a group of kids and, and they were talking something. When I was I was walking Everyone past the Olympics were fun. <laughs> I was, I was uh, walking past the Fruity Pebbles and I was thinking like like if kids are looking at it today, like they probably have no idea that that was a cartoon. Like they oh, would just be probably like, think it's just, just, just cereal, cereal just, mascot. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't even go back to think like, I bet you they were vitamins one day. But uh <laughs> I mean, you could do a fighting game with all the Hanna Barbera <laughs> characters. Do Marvel versus Capcom. Imagine Marvel versus uh, Hanna Barbera. You'd have Popeye. You'd have Bluto. You know, uh, the two stupid dogs are in there. <laughs> um, yeah. Adam and Ants. Oh man, the banana splits. Yeah, Bar- the Berenstein Bears are apparently Hanna Barbera too. And imagine, yeah. imagine the foul mouths you could give those characters, which is I going know. to be the segue. <laughs> into our segment here we're going to jump into the reason we are here which is foul mouth uh before we dive into the titles that we know you from that may be decorated around me right here uh we're going to concentrate on foul mouth which is currently live on kickstarter we're going to drop this video as quick as we can um what is it the 22nd i think it is yep in uh about 10 days 10 10 and a half days the kickstarter is over so um yeah we're, we're uh we're almost at the three thousand dollar mark, which is very close to our goal. Our goal is four thousand, but I feel like once we get to that three thousand mark, then people will be like, "Okay, we could help. <laughs> we could help back this thing." So here, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Uh, fingers crossed. And and uh, luckily, everybody's been so great and and so helpful. So, you know, thank you for backing uh, if you have, and thank you for uh, for supporting. I, I I appreciate all that. So from the insane brain that brought you fast killer sloths in slow pokes. And Chancleta wielding grandmas who fight zombies in zombie date night, and Santa fighting robots in Ex Machina, comes a superhero whose gift is to curse. After the divorce of her parents, teenager Faye Flick is adjusting to her new surroundings. 
a new city, a new home, and after accidentally getting possessed by a demon, which, you know, that's going to happen. Happens. It happens. <laughs> new abilities that turn her curse words into the ultimate weapon against evil. With amazing art and colors by Sarah, uh, Sarah Davidson, known from Hollow and Hero 2, and lettering that brings the whole project to life by HDE. A uh, 20-page comic is filled with laughs, heart, and a fuck ton of action. You know, here at the you said it, not me. <laughs> here at the Crimson Powell Comic Club, I don't think that word's actually been said without a censor. There is a warning before this episode, so it kind of feels a little freeing to kind of say that and not have to go back and edit it out. Um, I think that you, should be your next 31 day challenge. You just draw curse words. <laughs> draw <yeah>. curse words. <laughs> Uh, want a superhero comic that breaks the rules and tells the villains to F off? Then back Steve Urena's Follow Mouth on Kickstarter now. So what the fans are going to see is a trailer right now that's available on Kickstarter. There was a trailer, everybody. Check it out on Kickstarter. We're going to dive into uh, everything about this book and kind of the process to kind of further sell this. Now, we've seen you dive into horror comics. Uh, what made you switch to the superhero genre in this comic? So two things. Uh, first thing was after Zombie Date Night, I was like, you know what? I want to do something different for my next project or my next thing that I'm going to work on. Um, so I went and took a walk. This was during the pandemic and just like, you know, just thinking like, what is something that Marvel and DC can't do? And I was like, well, cursing. And I'm like, all right, well, what could I do with cursing? I can't just have a book of just straight cursing. That would be just, that's just not, you know, that's not good. That's just, that's just cheap gimmick of, of just cursing all issue. So I was like, all right, there's got to be something here. And I was like, all right, well, cursing, you know, what goes with cursing? Like demons. I was like, well, what if there's a superhero that gets possessed by a demon and gets her powers from cursing? And I was like, all right, that's kind of funny. But like, how could I do that? And as a big fan of Green Lantern and Venom, I was like, well, what if the cursing is like Green Lantern, where the more animated she gets and the more creative her cursing, the more it comes to life. So if she called somebody a shit sandwich, the shit sandwich will appear and fight the, the villains. And I'm like, I think I got something here. And I got so excited. I, I drew up the, the, the outline and the premise. My girlfriend was on board with it. I was like, this is this is something different. And it was it was written pretty quickly. Um, and it was it was just a, so much fun to just, you know, come up with this character of Foulmouth and and just, you know, the, the demon part and 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 uh the cursing. And you know, in, in this one I bring in super positive. So if you read the first slow pokes, uh my my beginning uh comic that I have in there, I bring those characters kind of back in the mix. Um, and it just it just worked out perfectly and because this this is something that she's powered by cursing and she's powered by this she can drop a literal f bomb she could be powerful she could be strong and and she can be somebody that is just you know wants to express herself and, and this is the way to do it and so what we're going to do i got a couple more pictures of the show but i'm going to set up this question and then if uh David and Kirby have any that are uh, strictly for follow mouth related. Uh, we'll dive into that. Um, talking about the language now, reading your other books here, you know, I was kind of wondering if there's certain comedians or directors that inspired you because 
and I hope this is a compliment because the names that I'm saying is a compliment. You know, I love these people, but it gives you like a Kevin Smith, Judd Apatow world of like, you know, all of those kind of movies, you know, like the slow pokes kind of felt like it was like, you know, super bad type of lingo and, you know, the name calling and just like the quips. And so I was kind of wondering if you had any inspirations, you know, if there's favorite comedians or directors and movies and stuff that kind of gave you your, your tone of humor. Definitely Kevin Smith. Absolutely. Um, one of the coolest things I got to do is a, a friend of mine knew uh, Ming Chen from Comic Book Men, and he asked me to send them Slowpokes, and he and it's in this it's in their store. They have it, um, which is very cool. Um, but Kevin Smith is definitely a big in, in, influence. I mean, Zombie Date Night takes place in a mall, so for me, I was like, well, Zombie Date Night is my second comic. This is my Mall Rats, it, and you know, you could do Dawn of the you know the Dawn of the Dead type of stuff in there as well, and it just kind of all blended together. But definitely Kevin Smith. Definitely, definitely um, Richard Linklater. Um, I just with dialogue and and love love those movies. Um, Judd Apatow definitely super bad is definitely a big influence on me. Um, but yeah, I just like to have fun. I just I think comics, it's missing that element of like, hey, I don't have to take myself too seriously. Just have fun. Like, of course, there's there's going to be times for serious, but I think just trying to entertain myself and entertain my friends is that's a good place to start. Uh, when you're creating comics and so far so good i must like i mean look at this like look at this logo here where I, it's it's f you it's if it has the the Grawlix characters in there and the black tongue she gets possessed by a demon it's just everything kind of falls into place and, and it's and it's it's been a, a lot of fun and and um yeah just taking those influences and making it my own yeah i got a feeling after reading all your other books and kind of being very familiar with your type of humor and language and stuff so i'm very uh, <laughs> very much anticipating when you're going into a uh, book that's all about, you know, cussing and everything. And then you add the superpower element. So. And, and to answer your other question, like to break away from the horror genre, it's been, it, it's definitely something different. Like I, I mean, but all of us in here can tell you, like we, we all grew up on superheroes before we moved on to what we needed to move, you know, before we moved on to horror, before we moved on to other comics. And I wanted a challenge. Well, I wanted something. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, no superheroes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still still superheroes. Yeah, and superheroes are awesome. But I I also feel like in in comics today with superheroes, it's a lot of the same stuff, mm. and it's a lot of like this awesome story will happen, and then they'll reset it, like nothing happened. And I and I'm tired of that. I'm just so I'm just sick of that. It's like let's have a story with consequences. Let's have a story where they progress and they they grow older and they and they they get you know they they mature. And I want to see more of that. Um, I and then completely the other, agree. Yeah. And then the other thing too, um, I took a comic class. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to talk crap about anybody. But um, I took a class and I asked, it was with a very big, well-known comic creator. And I asked them, I said, hey, if I, I've, I've had successful comics in the horror genre, if I switch genres, what is your advice for switching genres? And I don't think he meant to be mean. I think he meant like, hey, if you're doing what you're doing, like keep it going. But he, he said, uh, stay in your lane. And I took that as like, you know what? No, I'm yeah. going to I'm going to play and I'm going to have fun. And whether we get it funded or don't get it funded, that's on me. But I want to I want to have fun and I want to tell stories. It doesn't matter what genre it is. And I just think that's bad advice. I think for any creator, if you have an idea that's that you're excited about, pursue it. What's the worst that could happen? Failing is learning. You know what I mean? If, if I fail at this, it's learning. I'm going to just learn for the next one. You know, it, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I think saying stay in your lane is, is just bad advice. So this is me not staying in my lane and doing whatever I want to do. <laughs> so yeah. I found out the perfect character for that. Yeah, in right. one way, the advice to, you know, stick to what you know would turned out to be inspirational to do the exact opposite of what they suggested. Yeah. And this is a big time creator too. And I'm like, you were successful. I was like, imagine if you switch lanes, <laughs> like you would probably be be great. Um, but yeah, I I don't I, I feel like um another piece of advice is like go out of your comfort zone because that's where you learn how to like fly, basically. Like you learn how to adapt and 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 change and and you you'll be prepared. And you know, the only the other, you know, what's on the other side of fear, it's nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like once you get past that fear, you're free to go. You're you're free to fly. Yeah, stretch your creative muscles, expand and grow. Exactly. Look at look at Jordan Peele, the guy who did um, you know, who did Nope and, and Get Out. I mean, he did yeah. Key and Peele before this, and he was He's doing comedy. Yeah, 
if he stayed in his lane, we'd be missing out on a lot of awesome. Exactly. Work. Like you don't, you don't know what, what's in somebody. You don't know what, what, um, what they have. So I, I think if you, I think the, the best advice is to follow your muse. Like if you, if you have an idea, if it makes you excited, then that's where you're supposed to go. Um, so, and th this idea with foul mouth, I got so excited once I, once I came up with the idea for it, I was like, I have to make this happen. I have, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I, I got to figure this out and make it work. Cool, cool. And hopefully this will be, uh, you know, helping the final push there as we get more people uh, checking it out. Uh, jump over to Kirby. Uh, I believe you mentioned that your wife was a heavy influence on the character. Yes. Uh, <laughs> was that because she walked around and said, Steve, pick up your fucking clothes, put the fucking <laughs> toilet seat down. And it's like, why are you playing with your picture books again, damn it? <laughs> she, she's luckily been very supportive of me from the beginning. So she doesn't curse at me as much. I mean, sometimes she does, but definitely, definitely wasn't influences on the character. It's funny because she's a pre-K teacher. Um, so she's, she's very sweet to the teachers. But when the, when the, when the, when the time is done, when work is done, she'll come home and be like, ah, fuck. Or like, ah, God damn it. Like, ah, shit. So it's, she definitely was the, the, the catalyst for, for this and, and making Faith flick a girl. Cause I feel like in this day and age, it's great to have more female characters and it's great to have, you know, I've, I've, I've been in situations where, where women are talked over by men and like, that's so frustrating to see. And so you have a character who can curse on command and create things when she curses, like that's the ultimate, like that's the ultimate power to, to, to do that. I mean, listen, when you talk and you curse, people will listen and you know, there you go. There's foul mouth. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of people would agree that uh, Hit Girl was the best character in all of the Kickass. Yeah, you know, it was great. <laughs> comics, like you know, yeah, I'd say the female lead roles are pretty heavily influenced by what we enjoy. It's, yeah, in this group, also, it's you know, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl is one of my favorites. That's awesome. Many yeah. other characters I've loved over the years. And and I also love characters where they're not they don't have it all together. Like Spider-Man is, I love Spider-Man growing up, but like his, his powers can't help him in any, in any other situation, except for, except for fighting the bad guys. That's it. Like he can't, he, he could swing to work maybe, but like, what if he got moved to, you know, say Wisconsin, you know, where you guys are from, like, it would be very hard for him to just swing on things. <laughs> he could uh, stick with Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there was either in the movie or in the comic, but I, I remember a scene, at, at probably in both, but of him just kind of like looking ahead and just seeing like a wide open field and just being like, ah, oh, there's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <damn. laughs> I love how you built your creative team from the school that you're at. Yes. Uh, are you keeping an eye on this? Uh, yes. Buy and tell at the school to possibly use some more in the future. And yes, that's doing any type of help. I have, gone, helping them. I have gone exclusively through comics experience. Paul Aller and, and Andy Schmidt have, have helped me tremendously. Um, they help me find great talent, just great eyes for for them. So whenever I have a new project, I'll reach out to them. I'll be like, hey, like um, this is my script that I want to do. Who do you got for me? And they'll give me like four different artists, and I'll pick from that. And then uh, we'll go from there. Sarah Davidson is so goddamn good at, at what she does. Just making this style, it's it's so different than what I've, what I've done in the past because it's like cartoony, but it's fun and it's vibrant and it's just like, it's it's amazing. She did a great job and she helped create this world with me and, and it was just, she did a great job. It was it was awesome. And, and HD with the lettering, you need a great letterer in terms to get the, the, the cursing correctly and the dialogue and, and just what everything looks like. So I'm very, very grateful for the team that I, that uh, they put together for me and helped me put together. And, um, you know, I, I hope we get to more, but if not, this was still just an excellent, an excellent, um, excellent team, team project. I love how you're possibly giving people a chance at their first initial item to get them going. So. Yeah. I, I think I got a good system where it's like, these people need, need the exposure. And yeah. listen, I, I'm small time, like I'm still independent. I'm still trying to figure it out. But like, if I if I could help people get other work, like that's great. That's what I want. I, that's that's how I want. I just keep pushing forward. Yeah. Awesome, uh, David. Uh, yeah. So of course, you know, you've got a Kickstarter campaign going right now. Um, so I was curious, uh, how many? Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've used other crowdfunding types of things before um kickstarter 
but how many how many crowdfunding campaigns have you done and have any of them not been successful? So I have this is my I believe this is my fifth one. Um, so all the other ones have been successful, which have been I've been very lucky. Um, but I've stayed in the horror realm. So I think horror is a great place to start if you you know if you if you write that sort of thing, just because they're so open like horror horror websites if you're promoting it they'll take your press releases and, and post them because they're just looking for they're looking for anything you know horror is horror can be anything horror can be anywhere and 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 it's it's a little bit it was a little bit easier to do those campaigns this has probably been my toughest campaign so far um i love this the people that have read this have loved this and said so far that this is my their my best work which is crazy because I, I have a lot i think i i, I love each one differently um, but with, with foul mouth, I think there's a lot of superhero burnout at the moment. And I feel like, um, just in terms of the cursing that might turn people off, which is fine. Um, and I, and I think that, um, you know, people may just think that it is just a book about cursing, but at the end of the day, take a deeper look. It's about somebody finding their voice. And I think once people read that, then people will, will start being like, oh, this is, this is fine. This is great. Like, this is a fun comic and this is something that i can get behind but yeah this has been this has been tougher also with social media it is definitely just they've it's like elon musk just ruined twitter it's fighting just the algorithms it. and he's yeah. fucked with the algorithm and it's just there's it's just awful to see and it's just harder for creators to find that audience and i know that there's there's other you know there's other places to go like there's blue sky which has been good um, but I know that that, you know, people are trickling in little by little. Um, and I know threads open, but threads, I think is not good in terms of like, in terms of promoting a comic anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, finding those backers have been hard. So luckily I've been just trying to do shows like these and, you know, talk to people online and, and show what I got and, and hopefully, you know, show them my, the t-shirt for it and, and get people excited. But this one has definitely been the toughest one. Uh, we got a like a little bit over a week to go, and I, you know, we're 70, 75 percent funded, I believe, or seventy four, something like that. And um, I think we could do it. I think um, I think people will will come in at the last minute because they'll be like, all right, you know, he did the whole summer. I'll come in at at the end or whatever. But um, we'll see. Hopefully, we can get this funded and get some printed copies going and and get 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 stuff going. Well, not not to make you blush, but before this interview, I did up my pledge and added the. Thank you, I I appreciate that. Listen, every every little bit helps, even if for people who can't pledge. Listen, it, it, we're in a we're in a weird economy. Like people are losing their jobs left and right. People are getting replaced by AI, like things like that. So even if we just spread the word, I'm I'm okay with that. Like that's that's that helps me. That helps me just to just to get that exposure and and you know tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, but to all that who've backed, like like you, you backed all my projects, which is which is amazing and something that you don't see every day. <laughs> um, so for you, for people to keep coming back, I'm very grateful for you. I'm very supportive. And, you know, when you guys have something I want to support. So when you guys make your comic, I'll be the first backer. <laughs> and you probably wouldn't have seen this because when I posted it from my art account and didn't let me to properly take you on Facebook, but I sent a link and just said, Hey, I'm, you know, we're me and Crimson Call, we're interviewing Steve. Yeah. And then I put the link to the Kickstarter so kind of people can have it in the brain before they see the episode. Hey, I, I appreciate that. And my friend Jenna, who doesn't read comics, she loves all like comic movies and shows and all the culture and stuff around it. But she commented right away and I'm like, well, that's weird. And then she tagged a friend and said, this reminded me of you. And she tagged <laughs> her female friend. And I'm thinking like, I don't know who that friend is, but but it's one of those things too that, you know, yeah. I, I, think, I think once people see the concept, Cause that's, that's the, that's the part, right? Cause you see the concept you're like, I know somebody like that. Or like, even when they see the shirt, the shirt says cursing is my superpower. You know, somebody like that, you know, somebody that curses up a storm and would wear that shirt. So I always try to find in my characters relatability and just like, it's, it's hopefully somebody you could be like, you could see somebody, you know, like, you know, in the comics, you're like, Oh, that's somebody I went to high school with. That's somebody I work with. Um, so so yeah and 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 funny enough that you talked about like my girlfriend and being inspiration i sent <laughs> i sent the the character sheet to sarah davidson and she she drew up foul mouth and it looks very similar to my girlfriend i didn't even put the picture it just happened that way so you know it's out of love and and it, i think that's a positive sign for for hopefully getting this back 
Or or if it doesn't get funded, I'll just blame her. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a good fallback option. <laughs> I'll be like, it's your fucking fault. How dare you? But no, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. You just but, gotta uh, watch out when those curse words come back at you because you know what's yeah, gonna happen. Yeah, they will. Or she'll be like, this it didn't get fucking funded. That's on you, buddy. <laughs> That's a story for another idea right there. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, foul mouth to me getting yelled at, yes. <laughs> and the other thing I want to throw in, like, it was interesting the way you were saying about that, you know, starting with horror, just because the horror community seems more receptive to just kind of plug in advertising anything. And, like, whether or not, you know, uh, foul mouth gets funded, it's interesting to think, like, if this was the first thing you started with, like, yeah. you know, you, you did all these other books that kind of build your audience and, you know, get people like myself and Kirby coming in and, you know, we're always kind of browsing Kickstarter and doing all this kind of stuff to, to eventually find this book. But it is interesting to think that, yeah, if it started with the superhero thing, it just seemed, you know, there's so much out there that, yeah, yeah that maybe could have turned you away from all of this in general. If you, if you start off with a failure, hopefully there's enough drive to kind of keep you going. Yeah, but yeah. like, it's interesting to think that, you know, the, the genre could, you know, that horror yeah. was a good entry. So. It it is a good entry. I I definitely recommend it for for those who want to write that. But I mean, I think the more you have fun with your stuff, the more you'll find your audience. So you could have a superhero comic, that's fine. But if you're not having fun with it, if it's just like for every great Kickstarter comic, I always see the comics that are very much like a rip off of like, you know, it's just somebody did their own Spider Man, somebody did their own thing, very close to even the name and things like that. And I'm like, people don't want that. People don't. People want something different. So. You know, I, I definitely think horror is good, but I think if you just if you have if you have love in it, then people are people will find it. That's, That's why great... I believe right now is the greatest time of comics. Yeah, in a long time, if not the best times, right now, just because the vast array of things that we're getting, and we're getting quite a few creators, so it could crash eventually with too much input. But yeah, yeah it's just beautiful I what think, we're getting out there. Think, Lots I of fun ideas. This, Absolutely. I think it's great. And the more the merrier. I'm tired of this like, oh, it needs to only be these people. It's like, no, these people are some of the most creative people I've ever met in my life. Like, let them. We cook. don't need superheroes being good. Let's watch superheroes kill other superheroes. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I mean, there's just so much, so much stuff out there. It's it's awesome. Go go to Kickstarter and back as many things as you can. I, and, and and it's just nice that people are taking the chance to do this. Like, just the fact that you're you uh, got an idea, put it through, made it happen. That's that's a miracle. So you know, you know, we're we're at this point, and it's it's just very cool to see. And and it's people like you who make who make this happen, and and it's we're all very appreciative of it. Cool, cool. As we're getting ready to wrap up the follow mouth section, move on to a couple other things before we wrap it up. We will jump to David here if you got another question. Yep, n another one related to the Kickstarter. Um, all right. So I know, like like all kickstarter campaigns you've got some rewards on there uh why don't you tell us a little bit about the rewards that you have for the people who are backing this yeah. and when you're doing some of these crowdfunding uh campaigns like how do you how do you come up with like what am i going to give for rewards to the people who are backing my project so if you're if you're coming up with a kickstarter or, or a campaign in terms of what you want to do i love merch like right like you know you always need a, a cool t-shirt um you know, something that you can take home and, and hold on to because the comic is great. That's a good physical thing to have. You can do sign copies. It's great. But no, people want people want to have fun with your thing. So I have, you know, foul mouth. I have the cursing is my superpower T-shirt, which I people, everybody I've, I've showed gets a big smile out of that. And then I also have bumper stickers because I'm like, well, cursing, that's the best place to curse is on the highway. <laughs> so so, um, yeah, I, I think about think about what you would want to buy. Like if you were if you were backing a comic on Kickstarter right now, what's something you would want? You would want stickers. You would want a t-shirt. You would want, you know, I, I've, I've had, yeah, whoopee cushions. I've had people get killed in my comic. I mean, look, look at uh, Anthony. He got killed in, in my comic uh, and he, and he, and he, and he bought a bunch for his friends to, to give out for, for, for everybody. So, you know, if it aligns with your story, um, I've done theme music um, just because it's, if it works for certain things, it, it, it may be a good, good thing and people have bought it. So just, you know, create and just have fun with it. Have fun and, and make make the things that you want to see made. Cool, cool. and that's a great segue uh, talking about uh, being killed in one of your books because uh, the reason why uh, I became to, you know, to why we're here today is because I was watching, you know, my weekly edition of the Comic Book Club live show 
uh, where we have Alex, Justin, and Pete. You know, they've been doing it for like well over 15 years, and I've been watching them during the you know, majority of that time. And so I'm just sitting down on a Tuesday night, and it's about time, and I turn on their YouTube show. And then uh, Steve comes on, and he's talking about this uh, book about, you know, killer sloths. I'm like, oh, I'm listening. I'm eating my dinner, and I'm <laughs> listening to this. And as he was talking, he's talking about those rewards. And he mentioned that there's a tier where you can get yourself killed off in a book. And I was riding off the high of recently being drawn into uh, Mike and Laura Allred's X-Ray Robot. That was through another Kickstarter. And that was like kind of was the drug that kept, you know, kept me going. And all of a sudden I heard yours and I'm like, wait, I can have another cameo. I could be like the Stan Lee of comic books here. So I, as the show was going on, I just went and pledged and did it. And then I typed it into the chat and then you guys reacted because Alex brought it up. And then, so yeah, we had a, a small interaction from text to, to video. So once that happened, I told the Crimson Cowl Comic Club and everything. And then Kirby eventually, you know, jumped on. So he's got a couple of those tiers too, uh, whether it's, you know, the zombie date night and the slow pokes and everything. So yeah, uh, talking about your books, just kind of uh, won't dive in too much. Basically what we'll do is uh, we'll kind of highlight each one. And if there's any questions at the end about any of this stuff, we'll throw them in there. Um, but if you can give a quick pitch on slow pokes. All right, so uh, what happens when sloths become fast? They become killing machines. So that's slow pokes right there. That is my head on the cover because <laughs> I thought of, I thought to myself, if I'm going to make a comic, um, that I gotta put myself in it somehow. So <laughs> it, this might I, I thought to myself this might be the the last comic I ever do. So might as well have fun with it. But yeah, fast killer sloths. That's basically it, and they, they're coming for you. And then, and then uh, you use the sequel. That's right. The sequel was last year that I that I that I came up came out with it, and um, Slow Pokes has been a great. It's it's my it's my uh, gateway into comics, which has been awesome. And um, I love the fast killer slots, and I love that how much fun that you could have. So yes, they went they went to they, they went to a camp. Um, they went to Camp Pokemoke, which is uh, that way you could do Camp Slow Pokes, as you can see down there. And um, I thought you know what you could have so much fun with the merch in terms of like the camping stuff. You could do you could do um oh and then there he, that's where he is where he's getting killed <laughs> yeah i was just going to cue that off that there's a certain handsome fellow there that's uh meeting a certain fate in that <laughs> book so. me. <laughs> <laughs> the profile the side profile you know i grew a beard since the death but uh yes. side profile really works so but uh slow pokes has been great for me because i when i first did this i i, I tried to do two thousand dollar pledge or you know two thousand dollars to get funded on kickstarter just to get some of my money back and i made close to 10 so i'm like all right i'm gonna take my my so my vow now in terms of making any type of project any money that i make from comics will go into another comic like i'm not trying to buy a sloth for code or anything like that like <laughs> i'm trying to create and just keep making the fun stuff that i'm making um, but slow pokes is the gateway and I love it. I love it because people will send me stuff. Now I get all sloth stuff now. So I'll get, um, you know, I'll get sloth ties, sloth t-shirts, sloth shoes. Um, somebody got a commission done of me where it's me as the tiger King, but it's the sloth King. <laughs> so just, it's been, it's been my claim to fame and, and I love it. I just, I just, I, I hope to keep going with it. Um, you know, after, after three, and I would love to do, um, just as many slow pokes as I can. And then a little pitch for zombie date night. So zombie date night, uh, if you're on a blind date and a zombie invasion happens, would you stay or would you go? So that's what zombie date night tells the tale of this awkward blind date that happens during a zombie invasion and all the zaniness that happens. Because listen, if you guys are on a date with, uh, you know, with somebody, somebody you match with on Tinder or, or a dating app, or, you know, even if you met them outside and a zombie invasion happened what would you do would you stay would you go if the date is going terrible would you stay or would you dip out so that that's kind of where that came from and and um that was that's my longest comic to date at 32 pages and uh uh sir sir sergi the domenic is the the artist for that and it, it's just if that was my my uh my so i came in with the slots and the second one was like all right what could i do i want to jump out of the slots for a second what else could i do and Zombie Date Night is where is is I think where I was able to shine and, and show more of my voice. So you're thinking, oh, she's a four, but she kicks zombie butt. Exactly. Now she's an eight. <laughs> like now she's a nine or ten. You know, 
It just, I feel like um, in, in a situation like that, if you're, if your life is on the line and somebody saves you, it, it, it changes the dynamic of the date. So um, I want to play with that. And um, I can announce here, uh, my next project after Foul Mouth will be Zombie Date Night 2, which is I've just finished the script for, and um, I'll be sending it out shortly. Yeah, I'm fairly certain I uh, I did a death reward on that. Yes, one. Yes, I believe I believe you are a zombie in that. Um, I'll be asking for your picture very soon. <laughs> but I, um, I, I figured I'll update it. I've I've changed yes. my look since then. I I don't want to, you know, after you know Slowpokes two came out, just all summer long into the fall and the winter, I just kept getting recognized and people wanted pictures with me. I'm like, <laughs> I appreciate it. I, that that'll happen. That'll yeah. happen. Man. They didn't want straight on pictures. They wanted the profile. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, it's not my good yeah, side, side, you know. <laughs> So I'm like, I have to get away from this just so I can live a normal life. So I started growing a beard and shaving my head and everything. But that's awesome. Um, in Zomb Zombie Date Night, we do see a Santa Claus, which is a great segue into the other book, Ex Machina. So yes, Ex Machina tells the tale. It is the years 2045. If uh, if so, S Santa basically fighting robots. So Santa is is uh, is in a rough place. He is he is down on his luck. His wife left him for the abominable snowman. And he is, you know, down on his luck, sour. And so he decides to sell his likeness, uh, his essence, if you will, to a Mark Zuckerberg type of social media uh conglomerate to uh to take his essence and make it into an app. Um, so what they do is they take his his essence and they put it into a robot. And because because he's sour, the robot becomes sentient. And then Santa has to fight robots with his friends to save Christmas and get back to where he used to be. <laughs> All of these books have a similar theme and it's fun. Like it's just every book, is, you know, it's very action packed and fun and funny. And yeah, it's, but then, you know, you're dealing with just completely different characters and, and scenarios and stuff, but it yes. still has and, that common thread of, of your writing. And, and, and Ex Machina holds, I hold a very uh, dear to my heart because that's the first time I worked with a partner on a comic. And yeah, Misty Graves. Misty Graves, she's great, incredibly talented. It helped me punch up everything and just made me, made me better. Like this made me better, and and um, I know I hope I hope to get back to Ex Machina. And then Lane Lloyd, excellent artist who who did everything for this, um, just just really talented. Um, I, I'm so lucky to just find people who are on board and and are just as zany and wacky and fun as me. Because with Misty Graves, uh, we met on a podcast. She had me on her podcast to talk slowpokes. And she was like, oh, you know, I want to write too because she's an artist as well. And I was like, okay, like, let's shoot ideas together. Let's figure it out. And with her, um, I had an idea to do evil elves. And then I was going to call them helps. And then she had an idea where it's like kind of like Google where you type your wish in and it 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 comes it comes true, but in the worst way possible. And I was like, well, there's got to be something with Christmas and robots. I was like, what if we combine those ideas and it's Santa fighting like basically like a Terminator, like AI. And we were like, that's it. That's the, that's the idea. And we, again, kept to a schedule. She was very, it was very supportive. Like, again, working with somebody you don't know, you, you're not sure what could happen. It could be combustible. It could be whatever. But she was so, so easy with stuff. And we would just talk about the script and, and have these Zoom calls about like, okay, what if we did this? This is my idea for this. And it worked flawlessly. It worked incredibly. And I, that could have gone terrible. <laughs> it could have gone so terrible. But I think that, you know, that's the power of comics is the power of coming together for a greater good. Um, so, you know, that's what Ex Machina is about. And I hope to make a site uh, to, so I can put all these things and then put orders because I'm tired of I'm tired of all these people profiting off of ideas. Like, you know, I mean, you're, there's a writer's strike right now. Um, I know, you know, the, the big two, some of them don't pay, you know, well, what I think they should be paid. So I think for this. I want to do it. I want to do this as independently as possible. I, I'm, I'm thinking of starting an LLC and like, you know, imprint just to have my stuff underneath it. And just like legally, it's like, okay, well, yeah. zombie day and night and all this stuff is, is here. Um, and, and then go from there and then, and then a site and then a store within the site, because it's just me, it's me packing all the comics. It's me doing it all. And then with any profits I make, which we'll just go towards me doing more comics. So hopefully I can get that done by, by next year. Um, but yeah, I just, I love being independent and I love, I love this. So I want to keep doing this and, and, and having interactions like this and, and having those one-to-one -one connections where you're, you're getting killed by sloth. Like that's, that's amazing. <laughs>
See, now I started backwards. I've got a website with the ability to sell <laughs> stuff, but I haven't made this stuff to sell yet. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you got you to start making stuff. I, like I said, whatever you guys make, I will back. I, I will be your, your reader, so at least you have one. That is much appreciated. So that is a quick uh, overview of the books that uh, he's done uh, prior to Fallmouth here. So if anybody has any questions that are related to any of those things, I will kick it off as you're thinking. Because when it comes to the sloths, now I have a friend named Leslie who is, you know, is a Kristen Bell sloth relationship type of personality. Yes. And uh, so I reached out to her and I sent her uh, one of the issue two uh in a recent care package and she got super excited she loves horror and halloween and stuff too so it was it was the perfect blend for her so i reached out to her earlier and i said hey i'm having steve on the show tonight i'm like if you could ask the guy that made this you know the killer sloths uh <laughs> comic what would you ask him so she asks what inspired him to make a horror genre piece around a creature many find to be cute and innocent so for me, uh, Slowpokes was my first comic in terms of, um, you know, actually me creating something. And um, I, I always loved the sci-fi movies. I always loved horror movies when I, I would go to Blockbuster and you'd see the cover art and you'd be like, man, I don't know what that is, but that cover art's so cool. I hope it lives up to your expectations. So I remember joking with people at work and I was like, you know, they're doing Mansquito and and Leprechaun and and different, you know, Sharknado and I was like, what's next? They're going to make slots fast. And, and and I was like, you know what? Maybe there's something to that. And then this was pre-comics, right? So I was just, I had this idea. And then in comics experience, they're like, oh, we need you to come up with a 20-page story. For, and, I, and I just took this as a class. I didn't I didn't think that I was going to be writing comics. I thought I was just going to learn how to do it and be, it'll be fun and, and that's it. But I wrote the script in class and it was well-received in the class. Like people were like, oh, I'm dying laughing. Like, this is amazing. This is fun. And they came to me and it was like, do you want to get this done? And I was like, you know what? If I get it done, what's the, what's the worst that could happen? I, I made this thing and, and I, I, you know, it's killer slots. Like maybe people will buy it, maybe they won't, but at least I'll have like, I did this. I you know this is something I could do. Um, so they got it made and I put it on Kickstarter just to see, just to see, you know, just to see like what, what people, and it, and it, that, that got me here. So that's why I tell people like create, you know, you never know. You never know what could happen. I'm me on my fifth comic from a killer sloth. You know what I mean? Like I'm moving, <laughs> I'm moving fast, like the killer sloths. But um, I, I I just wanted to make some they look scary. Like if you look at a sloth, they look scary and they have claws. And I thought to myself, if they were fast, what if they were fast and you know, they they just wanted to kill. Like, you know, once they were slow and they had no choice but to be slow and whatever, but if they were fast, like wait a second, I could use my claws. <laughs> like that's the kind of where I always came from, came from that. Yeah. That kind of idea, you know, kind of reminds me of a, a certain creative pair of uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, you know, designing just, you know, Hey, here's a funny Ninja Turtle that, you know, whatever. And then that turns into this and, you know, here it is. The entire world yeah. knows what a Ninja Turtle is. So I, yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like slow pokes will build my fortune. Like, I, I mean, like slow pokes will build my comic career. And so I'll always be thankful for that. And I'll always be thankful for, and also you could just have cool merch. People love sloths, but like a killer sloth, you could make so much different merch with it and have fun with it. And you could just take them to so many different things. So my, my in terms of Slowpokes, I love that each Slowpokes edition is like a different type of horror movie. So as we get to the third one, and as we get to like, hopefully the fourth and fifth one, it'll just be like, oh, that's funny because they're going here. Or that's funny because we're doing a, a type of this. Yeah. So I have somewhat of a plan, so I'm I'm trying to work on that. But yeah, so the the, the slots that that's where those ideas come from. <laughs> awesome, uh, Kirby. Uh, zombie! I can't wait for Zombie Date Night Two, where we get to finally see a zombie snow snowball fight. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in uh, with the Zombie Date Night uh, Kickstarter, you did the movie thing, yes. where you did the uh, horror movie watch and stuff you got plans for more of that in the future with some of your other ones or? uh yes i always for people who are paying attention you know because listen every every campaign like I, i've been getting different people for each one so like people have been there since slow pokes to this one but people have been like it's like a i would say it's like a monorail and like people are like jumping on the monorail <laughs> you know what i mean people are jumping on the train um to towards the next one so i will always uh if i can if it's if it's if it's not forced I will always uh, pay tribute to my other comics in different ways. 
and uh, hopefully, so keep an eye out for that. Cool. And uh, with all your little collab, different types of styles that you have going right now, uh, you got any thoughts in mind for a possible whole clash of all your different characters, like a date night that it's around Christmas time and they're going for a sleigh ride and all of a sudden they're interrupted by robot elves and flying killer sloths led by a full mouth psycho Santa. <laughs> is, there a, I, I, is there a Kevin Smith connected universe brewing? <laughs> I swap think, speed dating. <laughs> I think, I think there's a way to connect it somehow. Um, but for now they're all in their own, they're, they're all within the same, I think galaxy, I'll say that, but they're all different, like, you know, they're all different places and, and universes, I think. But I do, I do think that down the line, I would love to have a mishmash of all the characters together. Cause I think they kind of complement each other and they're all different pieces of me. So I, I, there's gotta be a way to, there's gotta be a way to do it somehow. I don't want to give all your storylines away, but I, I expect Spencer to make an appearance at the final sloss to save us all from the <laughs> sauce. <laughs> but, uh, uh one last question for you i had a i heard that you did work for the ufc i don't know what you basically did for them have you ever thought about a possible storyline with some mixed martial arts involved and i mean i think it would be really fun i i probably shouldn't even be saying this stuff online in case you want to use any of these ideas <laughs> but this way it's copyrighted because we talked about it <laughs> Uh, I was thinking your foul mouth character entering the mixed martial arts world with a coach <laughs> named Chuck Liddell. And while she's fighting, she could, she could be in a grappling position where she's losing and she just whispers into the other girl's uh, ear that calls her shit pants. And all of a sudden she <laughs> makes her, her pants. <laughs> right <during> that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. That's awesome. Um, I love I love MMA. MMA is, is great. I, I worked for UFC for a little while as, as a freelancer. Um, and it just yeah, I would love to to utilize MMA somehow into the into the comic world because I think there's just so many fun characters and fun things you can do with with the octagon. And also I love I love writing fight scenes. Fight scenes are just so much fun to do, and especially like, the bloodier the better. You can pop eyeballs and break noses and make people shit themselves or throw up and <laughs> like I I love that. So I I would definitely take that into consideration. I just gotta find the right, I guess, vehicle for it. Um but yeah I I love I love MMA and, and I hope uh hope we, we can work it out. Even our a friend of our show, Art Balthazar, he uh does more kid friendly style of comics, mm-hmm. but he joined up with Casarian and stuff and they do did a couple of wrestling comics and I thought awesome. that was a ton of fun. Very cool. so, yeah. That's very cool. I also liked uh, Headlock by Michael Kingston. He does a very yep. good job. Um yep. and, and like do a power bomb I, I've heard a lot of good things about. And then I got um, the R V D books that he he wrote and those awesome. were really enjoyable too. Um uh this is a great segue when you mentioned uh talking about you know uh your scenes and all that stuff. I kind of wanted to know when it comes to like the detailed kills and books and like the action and not specifically mine, but just overall, like, <laughs> um, is that, how do you approach it as a writer? Like, are you the writer that writes out like, okay, this is how they get attacked in this one. This is how, or you kind of let the artist run with it. What's your process on the details? I'll say this, like, I think it's famous that George Lucas, like when it comes to like a Jedi fight, that it's just like they fight and then you just let, all of the talented choreographers and artists and do their thing. So I was kind of curious on how detailed you get into those specific things. He just so, thinks how many different ways would I love to kill Anthony? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll, whatever, I guess, whatever gets a reaction out of me, like if it fits with the story, I will meticulously write the kill scene. Like, okay, this is what happens. This is how it goes. And then the artists luckily have been very like, hell yeah, add to it. You know what I mean? Add to it, make it more gruesome, make it, make it crazier. Um, but like with slow pokes, killing, killing the slocks, uh, I just wanted to just go as wacky as possible and, and just be like, man, when you get killed by a killer sloth, you're like, fuck, how did this happen? <laughs> like with the roller coaster going down, I was like, all right, roller coaster, 
they go in, heads come off, and they're all, you know, I just, I just thought that was a cool thing, and, and it'd be something different, or, like, somebody get killed with a vape, just because, like, you see people vape, and you're like, it looks like they're sucking on robot penises, I gotta kill these people, you know what I mean, like, <laughs> that's what I gotta do, um, so, yeah, just, just seeing, it's doing stuff that I want to see, that's basically my writing style, it's like, what do I want to see, how can I make this, what, what would I, what would I pay my money to, to look at, um, and- the, the roller coaster yeah. one is like the perfect one because whether you see it or not, you have the same reaction. So when you, you come out on the other end and see the heads are all lopped off, if you would have actually seen that, you would have reacted the same way as, as the outcome. Yes. Like it's, it's, the imagination exactly. runs wild. Everybody knows what happened. And yeah, exactly. Um, that, and then I love the, the Gravitron scene. So like, I love, I love, like, you know, I I I went to the, the the carnival as a kid, and they had this ride called the Gravitron, where, like, you know, I I feel like a lot of people have have seen it probably through that Midwest, like, you know, local carnival comes to town, yeah. and um, you know, you could you could <laughs> you're basically stuck in gravity. That's that's the gimmick of it. So I'm like, oh, what if I can make this like a blender, and and that's and sloth blender, and that's where that's where that came from. <laughs> Lovely. Um... As we're getting close to wrapping up, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to raise your hands. But I have uh, another one set up uh, talking about the different genres that you've been playing in. Now, this isn't you revealing what your next, you know, you know, genre you're going to be tackling. I'm curious if there's a certain genre that would scare you in the sense of being like, I don't know anything about a Western or romance or anything like that where it's just strictly that if there's one of those that you think would be the biggest challenge to you, if you were to branch off, if you uh, didn't stay in your lane and you went off to a different lane, what would be the most challenging lane? Do you think? Um, I think that's a good question. Um, I, th- I mean, I think with romance, we got zombie date night. I think Western, if you look at ex machina again, it is technically a Western because yeah. it's some, it's a redemption story. Um, and he's going through the through the lands, and I didn't even notice that until it was done. I was like, "This is, could kind of be considered a western." Um, I definitely want to try all genres. Um, I definitely want to do something a little bit more serious. I'm not sure what that genre would be. I have some ideas in my mind, but like something that's not just like joke action, joke action, joke action. Like, hey, there's there's there could be jokes in there, but like maybe there's something that you know you can let breathe and and, and let manifest. Um, but I I'm, room I'm, drama. <laughs> Yeah, or try, a, court, a courtroom drama would be cool. I mean, I'm a big fan of Ace Attorney, the 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 video game. So yeah, probably probably that I would say that because just just in terms of like knowing the law, like I don't know anything about the law or 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 that type of thing. Um, but I, I mean, whatever whatever idea comes to mind, it's it's just like hey, just got to do the research and and let's and we'll figure it out from there. But I I'm open to all genres, and uh, you may see who knows what you may see for me next. Good, good, good. Um, so yeah, that's going to jump into the end of the show, just kind of wrapping up the plugs here. Uh, if you can let the people at home know where to find you online, uh, if you have that that online shop yet for some digital copies, any information that you can give us on where to find you? Sure. So, so right now, you can find me on Ko-Fi and Gumroad at The Steve Urena. Um, you can buy digital versions of my copies at this time right now. If you want a physical copy of uh, the only thing I'm sold out of is sl- the first slow pokes. I, I have I've completely sold out all 400 copies, which is wild. But if you want anything else, I will I have them, and um, you can just send me a message on. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at the Stevie Reyna. I think any place you know any whatever social media opens from now till next week, who knows? You know, right? You'll be able to find me at the Stevie Reyna. So T H E S T E V E U R E N A. And uh, just reach out. I'm friendly. Um, if you want a comic, if you want a physical version, just reach out. I will. I will mail it to you myself. You just Venmo me the money. That's that's all. That's all you need. Cool, cool, cool. I'll check yeah. you out on MySpace. Awesome, or a MySpace. <laughs> yes, I'll have to get a MySpace or a Zanga or a Live Journal or whatever. Like. <laughs> But yeah, once again, uh, thank you for coming on the show. And, uh, you know, everyone check out uh, Follow Mouth on Kickstarter. All of the links that we talked about, you're going to see it here. I'm going to put all that stuff in post. And uh, to go check it out, you'll have roughly a little over a week by the time you see this, if you watch it right away. But we'll help plug and get the word out and hopefully people check it out. And uh, wish you uh, success with this one as well as continued success. 
Because if you don't uh, get the message, I think we're on board for kind of. I think so. Like I said, I'm going to need a picture of uh, of all this because <laughs> this is, is incredible. But thank you guys for having me. You guys run a great show. Um, you guys are very professional. And uh, I will definitely be telling other co co comic creators to, to check you out. And I'll be promoting you guys as well. Oh, so cool. whatever you whatever you need, just let me know. I will I will put it out there. Thank you. And if anybody needs to follow us, all of our credits are at the end of the show after we wrap up. So check out all of the uh, the links on where to find us on the social medias, as well as uh, shows that uh, myself and Kirby uh, put on as well. So all of that is available in the credits. And I think there's just one more thing left to say. And I think I'm going to throw that over to David, if you had anything else you want to throw out at us. Just um, to be continued. Thank you.